booktube it's missy and today i'm here to give you guys finally my bookshelf tour of 2015. i spent eight hours reorganizing all my bookcases um this will be a billion parts because i don't want to overwhelm you guys i do have a ton a ton of books and you will know why i can't I am cutting myself off for like at least the rest of the year. I will only be buying pre-orders. Um, no more other books. Seriously, guys. This is all double stacked. It took me forever to get all these fit on my shelf without them being on the bed or the floor. And so, yes, so let's get started. Okay, so I thought I would uh, like share the books with you while I was in frame, but I just think it's easier this way. So the first book we have here is Everlost. This is the first book in the Skin Jacker trilogy by Neil Shusterman. Everwild. And the 
last book ever found. This is a YA middle grade-ish um, like ghostly paranormal series. And then we have Mr. Penumbra's 24-Hour Bookstore by Robin Sloan. This is an adult fiction. We have Pearl S. Buck, The Good Earth, which is a classic. We have Shannon Hale, Austin Land. Shannon Hale's the author, duh. Austin Land, um, this is a romantic comedy kind of, um, I don't know. It's a, it's a, an adult fiction, but it's based in like a Austin Land setting. We have The Farm by Emily McKay. This is a YA vampire series. We have Revenge by Yoko Ogawa. Sorry for the dog outside. Uh, this is a collection of short stories that all intertwine. We have Hold Me Closer, Necromancer. This is a YA paranormal. Um, he's a necromancer, obviously. And his um, it also has werewolves in it. Then we have Neil Gaiman, Stardust. This is a magical realism fiction book, and this is an adult book. Then we have Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters by Jane Austen and Ben H. Winters. This is a silly uh, retelling of Sense and Sensibility. Um, it is really, really good if you haven't tried it already and you do like Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I would definitely check it out. It is exactly the same, but with sea monsters. Next, we have Coma by Alex Garland. This is a adult book about a man who is in a coma and is trying to get out and figure out how to get his mind out of the dream world that he's in, I guess, if you could call it that, his unconscious. This is Red Spikes by Margot Lanigan. This is a collection of short stories, and they're all very twisted and weird, but I did enjoy it. Then we have Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by Jane Austen and Seth Graham Smith. This is a gorgeous edition, um, no dust jacket, and they have like plenty of um, pictured, like colored illustrations in the inside. This is such a fun read. Again, if you like Pride and Prejudice, this is the one with zombies. So Elizabeth Bennet has learned from a young age how to kill them, and it's so hilarious. Next, we have Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. Um, this is a magical realism book about a girl who has been murdered, and she's watching her family from like a heaven kind of place. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I've read the book and seen the movie. Then we have Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. This is the only book I have from her. Um, I really wish I had the other two, but this is an adult fiction thriller about a young reporter. Uh, I think she's in her 20s or something who has to go back to her hometown to uh, do like a, a report on murders that are happening there and lots of twisted dark things happen after that. <laughs> I'm like doing that wrong. And um, this is Weather by Lauren DeStefano. This is the first book in the Chemical Garden trilogy. Um, I love this book. It was given to me by a viewer and um, it's the only one I have. I think the covers are gorgeous. This is a dys dystopian science fiction book. I enjoyed the trilogy love it. Next we have Ransom Riggs. Oops, this is in the wrong order. Now I have to fix it. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, which is the first book. And then we have Hollow City, which is the second book. This is a YA paranormal fantasy about a boy who finds out that his grandfather knew some very strange people. Uh, next we have In Real Life, R. IRL by Corey Doctorow and Jen Wang. This is a, uh, it's not middle grade, it's a, a YA graphic novel about a girl who um, decides to start playing video games and she is a gold farmer, or she's not a gold farmer, but she's supposed to like hunt and destroy gold farmers 
on the video game and then they find out that that's bad because people who work in China live for for this. They they make their measly money by gold farming and so it's like a like an economical kind of telling book. Anyways, let's continue on. I'm terrible. Um the next book is Vampire Academy. This is the movie tie-in. Uh, paperback edition. This is a YA vampire series, which I absolutely love. I just love Rochelle Mead, so I'm biased. And this is the second one, Frostbite. Next we have Hellhole by Gina DeMaiko. I really would like to have a real cover of this, but this is the arc that was sent to me by the publisher. I love Gina DeMaiko and nobody talks about her. Somebody needs to pick her stuff up and read it too. This is a YA um, magical realism book about a boy who ends up accidentally summoning a demon and can't get rid of him. So that was, it's hilarious. Next we have Fight Club by Chuck Palalala, and this is an adult fiction about a man who has a split personality and does like some major trouble and doesn't know how to solve the problem. Plus there's Marla who, you know, she's hilarious. Next we have Coraline by Neil Gaiman, and this is a middle grade-ish YA like horror fantasy about a girl who finds out that there is like a alternate um, house and parents of her own and it's really creepy and the the villain wants to keep her and so she needs to escape. Super scary. I own the movie too. Then we have Libba Bray's A Great and Terrible Beauty. This is a YA historical fiction of, that has like magic in it. I haven't gotten to the second one yet, so I don't know if there's witches or if it's just magical, um, but it's really good. Then we have John Milton's Paradise Lost. I read this in college, totally enjoyed it. There's lots of annotations and highlighting in this book. I would like to reread it at some point in time. Then we have James and the Giant Peach by Raoul Dahl, and everybody should know this. This is a children's middle grade book about a boy who you know has some magical crocodile tongues and it makes the peach get bigger and a whole bunch of bugs and he goes on an adventure and then we have Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wayne Jones this is a YA uh, magical book about witches and it's a romance and it's just so good. I just love it. If you haven't seen this anime, I would definitely check it out. Next we have One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. I just read this a few weeks ago. This is a classic on mental illness and it was really good. And then we have Animal Farm by George Orwell, uh, another classic. Uh, this book made me extremely mad because the government sucks. And then we have ooh, Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. This is a nonfiction book of her life while in a mental hospital when she was a teenager. And that was very interesting. Then up here we have Dr. Jackal. Ooh, let me pull it out. Come on. Ooh, I caught it. Oh, we have Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde. I need a new edition. This one's ugly. By Robert Lois Stevenson. This is a gothic uh, monster book about, you know, Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde. And then we have Jonathan Livingst Livingston Seagull by Richard Bach. This is also a classic. It's about a seagull and transcendentalism and religion and, uh, yeah, this is my grandma's favorite classic, and I really did enjoy reading it. Then we have uh, Forever by Judy Bloom. This is a YA, good lord, it's so old, a YA, um, <laughs> like contemporary about a girl and her first time doing it. Like, I know it's so, like, kind of cheesy, but I, as you can tell, really enjoyed this book when I was a middle grader. That's embarrassing. Next we have Dante or The Divine Comedy by Dante um, Alighieri. Inferno. I also had to read this in college and enjoyed it immensely. 
It was my favorite book in college. I absolutely loved it. Next we have Heidi. Oh, come here, Heidi. Ooh, this is an old one as well. I got this when I was like in third grade. Um, I would consider this to be a classic, but it's probably not. It's just a children's uh, story about her living in the mountains with her grandpa. And then we have Perks of Being a Wallflower by Ch Stephen Chobowski. Chobowski, this is a uh, contemporary about a boy, and it's like coming of age, and his friends, and all that. And then lastly, we have Shade by Jerry Smith Reddy, and this is a uh, young adult paranormal about ghosts. All right, so that was the first stack. I will next tell. Bleh, I will now show you the second layer of this bookshelf. So the first book we have in this next layer is Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. This is a YA fantasy or high fantasy. We have the sequel, Siege and Storm, Ruin and Rising, The Fall by Bethany Griffin. This is a Edgar Allan Poe, The Fall of the House of Usher retelling. I quite enjoyed it by Bethany Griffin. By A.G. Howard. This is a retelling of Alice in Wonderland. And the sequel Unhinged. We have Ensnared. <sighs> All right, next we have Cinder by Marissa Meyer. Scarlet. These are retellings of fairy tales. So we have Cinderella and we have Little Red Riding Hood. These are YA. Beautiful Creatures by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. This is a YA witch book. Then we have Grasshopper Jungle by Andrew Smith. This is a YA contemporary magical realism fantasy. I don't even know what to describe this as. It's silly. It's about a boy who him and his friend accidentally release these giant grasshoppers into the world and then they need to kill them before they destroy the planet. And then we have Asylum by Madeline Rowe. Um, I also have Sanctum but my friend is borrowing it at the moment and this is a YA horror kind of book. Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of creepy. Next we have Jacoby by William Ritter, and this is another YA, uh, this one is a paranormal mystery book, and I can't wait to get the sequel, Beastly Bones, because I love that story. Then we have The Merciless by Danielle Vega, this is her debut novel. I thought there was going to be a sequel to this one, but I guess not. This is a a horror book about girls, kind of like Mean Girls meets the craft, and they torture one of their classmates, like not just a little bit torture, but like for real torture. It was a little gruesome, uh, but very good. Ooh, an adult fiction night film by Marissa Pessel. Oh God, that dog's driving me crazy. Um, this is a thriller, like crime mystery book. I quite enjoyed it. The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, another adult book. This one has magical realism in it. It's kind of like a fantasy, but not quite. Diviners by Libba Bray. This is a YA paranormal um, mystery. I quite enjoyed it. It's by Cassandra Clare. This is the collector's edition first edition. I didn't even know I had this. That's funny. But um, yeah, this is the, uh, what is it called? A spinoff of the Mortal Instruments, but this is set in a previous time. So this is like the seat, the prequel to the Mortal Instruments. I don't know. I absolutely loved it. It's like a, a steampunk uh, historical fiction, fantasy, paranormal, urban fantasy, kind of like that. Then we have Gem, and this is Clockwork Prince, again by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the Infernal Devices, and again, a collector's first edition, which I did not know I owned. 
That's what happens when you don't open your box sets and you just sit there looking pretty. And then lastly we have the Clockwork Angel with William Herringdale on the front. And this is book one of the Infernal Devices. The Wrinkle in Time, the graphic novel by Madeline Langles, but adapted and illustrated by Hope Larson. I really quite enjoyed this classic. And then lastly, we have Dracula by Bram Stoker, illustrated by Becky Cloonan. And this is a beautiful illustrated classic on, of course, Dracula, who is a vampire. So it's a gothic, oh, it's a gothic tale. And oh, that, that's, that makes up the very first shelf, all of my red books. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye!